Good morning, everyone. We will now begin today's meeting of the Tulare County Board of Supervisors. If everyone will please rise. We'll be led to, for the Pledge of Allegiance by Supervisor Vanderpool. Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. It's a great morning to be here in uh, Tulare County. We'll start with item one, the swearing-in ceremony for Supervisor Dennis Townsend, District 5. Go on down. Come on, Dennis Townsend, come on down. Please raise your right hand. I, I, Dennis Townsend, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, foreign and domestic against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations, Super. Calling the judge. <laughs> Here come the judge. <laughs> We're going to have the new supervisors make comments during board comments. So uh, as soon as the honorable will come back. Well, we have dead air. Amy, well, you got any new I do. material actually, you actually, want to share with Actually, us? real quick, um, whoever owns a white Mariner license plate 5XIY632, uh, you're in my parking spot. <laughs> so I got you. Um, Sheriff, could you call a tow truck, please? <laughs> Thank you. They were in your parking spot. Uh, no, they are now, but they won't be by the time I leave. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Very good. Right, we got it. Now we'll move on to item two, the swearing-in ceremony for Supervisor Eddie Valero, District 4. Would you like to introduce who you're bringing up? So giving the oath of office is my pastor, Pastor Angel Menchaca, and my parents, Miguel and Blanca Valero. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend 
that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. To the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will dwell or I will well and faithfully discharge and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter the duties upon which I am about to enter congratulations thank you very much now we'll move on to item three, election of the chairman and vice chairman of the Board of Supervisors for the year 2019. Open the floor for nominations. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Supervisor Crocker as chair, Supervisor Vanderpool as vice chair. Second. We have a motion and second. Any other nominations? Seeing none, we'll close the nominations. Please vote. <laughs> yeah, all knows. There we go. <laughs> there he is. Very good. I second the motion for voting. <laughs> now we can begin. Now let's start with uh, Board of Supervisors matters, and uh, we'll turn to our new vice chair, Supervisor Vanderpool. All right. Well, I'll keep my comments short because I guarantee you not everyone here is uh, here to see me. Uh, they're here to see our two new supervisors and hear them speak. But uh, uh, welcome to 2019. Thank you all for joining us today. It's great to see such a, a big audience uh, in, the, uh, in attendance here today. I uh, hope everyone had a safe holiday season. Uh, a couple of items I wanted to go over. Uh, been, uh, been pretty busy so far this year already, just attending swearing-in ceremonies. I mean, man, these guys are getting reelected, and they still have long ceremonies. And go to the sheriff's real, uh, or swearing-in. That guy talks forever, man. Wow. <laughs> but anyways, it was, it was a nice event, and um, I want to congratulate our sheriff. I wasn't invited to the DA's swearing-in. Was anybody else invited? Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Even though I was on the board of supervisors that appointed Tim Ward to uh, be uh, DA, he didn't even invite me to his swearing in, but that's okay. Um, went to the uh, Tulare County Office of Education swearing in. Congratulations to our new uh, Tulare County Superintendent of Schools. I appreciate Tim Heyer and uh, look forward to working with him in his new uh, capacity and position. And I also attended the Auditor Assessor swearing in. And um, yes, they do uh, still swear in dinosaurs, right, Roland? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had to, I had to make the comment. I saw you in the back there. <laughs> yeah. The the glare hurt my eyes all the way from back there, Roland. Um, tonight uh, there's going to be uh, an open house slash uh, public forum uh, ho hosted by Caltrans at the International Agri Center in Tulare uh, regarding the South Tulare interchange that will be held from 5:30 to 7:30, and anyone who I would like to make comments on that proposed project uh, is welcome to do so. They're looking for uh, feedback from constituents uh, and stakeholders as to which alternative is, is preferred. Um, and then uh, tomorrow uh, I will be at the uh, Tulare County Employees Retirement Association Retirement Board meeting and I am actually the uh, honored swearing in official. Uh, I will be swearing in uh, Roland Hill. Um, and other uh, re-elected or new retirement board trustees. So I look forward to uh, doing that. And Roland, I will be on time. So just want to point that out. <clears throat> That's all I have, Mr. Chair. And, and I do look forward to working with my new colleagues and, and welcome them here. Supervisor Sheckling. Yeah, so um, if you drive a white Mariner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, first off, I'd like to welcome Eddie and Dennis. It's uh, good to have you here. I look forward to working with both of you. Um, I also want to welcome back Tim Lutz, our new uh, HHSA director. I sent him an email yesterday. I said, welcome home. So I, I hope you feel that way, and I'm sure everybody will. 
A uh, couple of things I want to mention. Many of you have heard that uh, on uh, early Christmas morning, there was a fire in downtown Visalia where um, Cafe 225, uh, Acapulco Jewelers, uh, Mama Kay's Diner, and a, a few other uh, businesses on each side were damaged. So I just want you to uh, remember downtown Visalia and anything that you could do. There's a lot of employees that have been displaced. Uh, if anybody has work, but I know they are working with our Workforce Investment Board on on trying to find those folks some um, alternate employment. But um, again, keep downtown Visalians uh, in your minds. Yesterday I attended a, a press con conference at Visalia City Hall with C-SPAN. C-SPAN is in Visalia. They've been here since about Saturday. They will be featuring the city of Visalia on their uh, city's tour. It will be airing February 2nd and 3rd on C-SPAN channels 2 and 3. That's Comcast. They've been going throughout Visalia, and today, actually, actually around 8.30, they were at Mooney's Grove with uh, Amy King and probably Neil. I don't see Neil in here, but I have a hard time finding him. Um, so they'll be looking at the, the Ag Museum and talking about the history of Tulare County. So that will be airing on C-SPAN in February. And lastly, uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we'll, I will be attending the memorial for K-9 Bain from the Tulare Police Department that was killed in the line of duty um, a few weeks ago, and that is at the uh, Heritage Ag Complex. So that's all I have. I'm going to uh, do my comments first, so then we can give uh, the rock stars the uh, floor. Uh, after that, I, I've got a, uh, a couple items that I want to uh, highlight. Um, this, well, tomorrow evening uh, is Hillmar's football banquet and Hillmar beat Strathmore in the state championship um, this was uh, yeah it was yeah we won't <laughs> talk about the score but uh, you know Strathmore I've, I'm from Strathmore it's it's had a great run as far as football and uh, the Merced County supervisor that represents Hillmar Lloyd Pereira and I had a had a little bet uh, for a local charities in each of our communities I lost and he's asked me to uh, present uh, at uh, tomorrow night's banquet. So I'll be going up to Hillmar and uh, eating a little bit of crow, but uh, giving it to uh, Hillmar Helping Hands, which is a, a great organization that helps out that community. Uh, and then this Saturday, um, there is a, a retirement party for our Ag Commissioner, uh, Marilyn Wright, and, and her husband, Les Wright, who's also uh, retiring from Fresno County as their Ag Commissioner, and that, that will be up in Clovis, and uh, we'll be wishing them farewell as they head off to the cold, cold winters of Nebraska. I don't know why you would want to go there, but that's where they're going. So with that, uh, I welcome both of the uh, new members, and uh, I'm very honored to uh, serve this year as uh, as all of your guys' chair. So, Supervisor Townsend? Yeah. Look. He's got a lower arm. What's that? He's got <laughs> no. a lower arm. Oh, you can arm wrestle. <laughs> yeah. we'll see who wins. I will. I saw Eddie's notes. He's got a long list of notes, so I'll go first. <laughs> I, I promise I keep it less than 45 minutes. So. Uh. <laughs> Well, uh, when I started campaigning uh, about a year and a half ago now, you know, people would come up and ask all the time, you know, what does it feel like? Uh, you know, what's the experience like? And the word that keeps coming to mind is surreal. Uh, and and I got to say that today is kind of the culmination <laughs> of that, just uh, sitting here in this room on this side of the dais and, uh, and looking out and seeing everybody that's here. So uh, thank you so much uh, for coming, first of all, uh, for your support of Eddie and I as we start off on this uh, kind of a new adventure, really a, a, a big change for, for both of us. But, uh, you know, um, I got a, a text from Stephanie Cortez. She was, uh, worked for me for years and years, and she was the, uh, uh, she was the president of the, of the Porterville Chamber of Commerce at the time, and she sent me a text and, and simply said, are you running? And I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. And so I just, I just got back to her and said, for what? <laughs> And, uh, and she said, for supervisor. And, and my text back was, no, Supervisor Ennis, is, I'm sure, is running again uh, for the position. She texted back, said, no, he's not. Are you running? And she asked a second time. And uh, so that was the first uh, thing. And then uh, I had been sitting on uh, the TCAG board, Tulare County Association of Governments, uh, for several years. Uh, Mike Ennis had, uh, Supervisor Ennis had, 
uh, nominated me for that position, and I had, so I've been serving with each of the supervisors and the and the mayors or or somebody off the city council of all of the eight cities in the county. Uh, been doing that for several years, and so as we went to a retreat, and I walked into the the retreat up in Three Rivers, and uh, several of the supervisors uh, and the TCAG chair came over to me and congratulated me, uh, and I didn't know what they were congratulating me for. Uh, and they said, you are running, right, for Mike Ennis' uh, seat when he retires. And I said, well, it's the first I've heard of it other than a text from Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> and so Mike, uh, Mike came in. He had kind of a sheepish grin on, on his face. And I went over. I said, what have you been doing? And, and uh, <laughs> sure enough, he'd been telling everybody that I would be uh, running. And so thank you, Mike, for putting the uh, – back there in the back for putting that uh, – getting that started. <laughs> Uh, Jim Maples, who a lot of you you know, uh, uh, served before uh, before Mike has passed away, of course. But uh, uh, he and I were also friends. He had actually put the bug in my ear years before that. Uh, before, actually, before uh, Mike took office, I, I taught a couple of classes at Portable College for Jim whenever he was running for this position. Uh, and, and so he would come back and he would uh, update me on what was going on with the Board of Supervisors. He would come to our Rotary Club and update us on what was going on. And so that was sort of the first uh, interest uh, in it. And then, and then Mike you know, followed up behind Jim and then he also uh, did that same thing. So both of them have had a, a big impact on, uh, on me in making this decision. But but I took, after that retreat, I went home and, and I just felt weird, you know, that everybody was congratulating me on running when I hadn't even thought about running. And, and, uh, and so I went to my wife, I went to Cece, who was up here uh, in the front, wave. <laughs> and uh, I went to her and I, I told her what had happened and I said, what do you think about, uh, about that? You know, people asking me to run for the board, what do you think about us taking a run for that? And I figured she would give me maybe two thumbs down. Uh, instead, here's exactly what she said. She says, you know, whenever you leave for work every morning, that when we pray, you know, we pray every morning together before you leave. I said, yes, I, I know that. And she said, do you know the one thing that you pray for every single day uh, without fail? And I'm trying to think, well, there's a few things. And, and uh, she says, you pray for direction every day. And I, and I went, oh, you're right. I do. <laughs> I do pray for direction every day. She goes, don't you think this is direction? And so she completely upset that apple cart of what I thought she was going to say <laughs> and saying that was direction. So uh, I thought that, was I, that should have probably been clear enough uh, direction, you know, to move forward, but I wasn't quite convinced. So I took about two or three weeks uh, we, we took in, in, uh, in, in prayer contemplation about whether to take, this, uh, to take on this new role uh, or not, because I love my job as an architect, and I, I didn't have any, any real plans to change that. Uh, and so we, we were praying about it. And... I went to several people, but one of those was my mom, uh, who was a huge influence uh, in all of our lives, myself, my siblings, grandkids, great-grandkids, and uh, unfortunately, she's battling really badly right now with health problems, C could not make it uh, today, but, uh, but anyway, she had actually fallen, broken a hip, she was in the hospital during the time that I was making this decision, so I went to the hospital, and I said, Mom, what do you think about me taking a run for supervisor uh, to Larry County? And she looked at me and she said, what's a supervisor? <laughs> I said, yeah, that's kind of what everybody says. <laughs> but, uh, but I said, you know, because uh, she had known Mike Ennis for years and years, went to church together when I was a baby. Sorry, Mike. I was, yeah. <laughs> but I said, you know, Mike Ennis' job when he retires. And she goes, oh, you were born to do that. That was her exact words. And, uh, and I went, wow, really? And so uh, that, that kind of put the icing uh, on the cake, but, but still stubborn. I thought, well, I better ask my pastor. So, uh, <laughs> so Pastor Chris Farrell and Pam, they're back there, wave <laughs> right there. And, uh, and so I went and, and, uh, one morning and, and just said, hey, Chris, here's, the, here's what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this, whether I should do this. I told him all the reasons why I thought I shouldn't uh, <laughs> run, uh, all the things that could go wrong, all the things that could happen in the future, and he said, okay, Dennis, I'm going to pray for you, but first, um, I, I just want to ask you one thing. Do you think God opened up this opportunity and has asked you to run for this position? And I said, well, yeah, absolutely. It's been one of the clearest things he's ever said to me was to run for this. And he says, okay, did God tell you you were going to win? I said, no, he was kind of silent on that. Uh, <laughs> on that, that. <laughs> 
So he says, well, you know what? You're supposed to do what God tells you to do, regardless of what the outcome is. So you take the step. Uh, you, you take the step if God told you to do it. So that time, that was the actual, that, that was it. That put the clincher on it. Uh, decided to run, and it's been great. And people uh, have stepped up. There's a lot of people in, in the crowd uh, today that have that stepped up and gave a lot of their time and gave a lot of their talent, their energy, their, their treasure, their money um, to make this happen. Um, we are sitting next to my wife is, is Amy Hood, and uh, Amy's our, our neighbor, and uh, I had hired her, and uh, she just all of a sudden became campaign manager, <laughs> not having done it before. Thanks, Amy, for all of your uh, hard work. Really appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, anyway, there, and there's, there's several others that did that. I remember Dennis Locks coming and saying, hey, we're going to throw you a fundraiser. We're going to have it out at the Deucen's house. We're going to uh, do the same thing we've done for Mike Ennis, and uh, we've done some things for Sheriff Boudreau, and we're going to help you with that. And so uh, they, they stepped up, and uh, I figured that must be my committee, the people that threw that party. I think they meant to throw one party and call it good, uh, but they became a campaign committee. And so for, uh, for about a year there, we met at, at 7 o'clock about, about, every, about every week, uh, uh, once a week, about 7 o'clock in the morning. And several people, including Wanda Ashita, sitting there had to get up before the, uh, they normally would get up to come and make that meeting and help out with that. But uh, all of you that helped out with the campaign, thank you so much. It means uh, so much uh, to me and to CC that you've helped out uh, like that. So appreciate you. And uh, there's lots of other friends out there. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for all of your support. Employees, my, I see Michael Taylor back there and, and uh, Raquel Simmons back there with their, with their spouses. And thank you guys for putting up with uh, me being gone. When I said, hey, guys, I'm going to be gone quite a bit out of the office while I'm doing this campaign thing. And they go, hey, boss, you're always gone out of the office. It's time. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to say thanks, uh, thanks for all of your support. I really have appreciated all the help and all the, all the prayers and, and, uh, and practical help getting here. Uh, I do want to say this. Please don't stop. <laughs> we really, really, really covet your, your prayers in this. Uh, we're supposed to be your uh, representative. I'm supposed to be your representative for the 5th District and, uh, and to help with the county. And so please pray for me for all of these as we go on and, and make these decisions and, and, uh, and, and lead the county and represent you. Uh, we really appreciate it and, and covet those prayers. So thank you very much. God bless you. All right. So first I'll give some brief remarks and then I will jump into supervisorial matters. Um, so this is uh, what I kind of wrote because sometimes I get emotional and I need to have. Um, but nonetheless, I'll begin. I always share with people that my hometown believed in me before I believed in myself. And now in front of me, I see people who have inspired me, who have encouraged me, and supported me along this journey. For me, this journey has been much different than what I had pictured. For um, until recently, about six years ago, I was ready to become a university professor. But I got a tug in my heart back in 2012 to return home and invest in community. Because I realized that service for others was better than service for self. Thus, I packed my bags and have never looked back since. I truly believe this county is one of the best in the state. And I will work hard with my colleagues on this dais to realize our great purpose and to make our county thrive for years to come. There are several people I want to thank, and I know that naming everyone in this room would take up a lot of time. So thank you to my family and friends that are here and for those that couldn't make it. I couldn't have done this without you. Teamwork truly makes a dream work. And you proved it with your encouragement and support, whether in small or big measures. I'd like to thank my father and mother for instilling in me a strong work ethic and to seize every opportunity that comes my way. Although they were both surprised when I shared I was returning home, their initial remark was, what in the world are you doing? They soon realized that my world was being a part of our great Central Valley 
and working to make it better. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you to my pastors in the CWC family for providing leadership nuggets every step of the way and for strengthening my leadership skills. It is because of this foundation that I lead with love and compassion. To my colleagues from the cutler OC Joint Unified School District, thank you for reminding me that a house divided cannot stand. You all have helped me refine my leadership capacity while working together to move our district to new heights. Jason Carnes, my consultant and the entire team, thank you for investing in me and for seeing my campaign through. To the students I've mentored along the way, thank you for staying on track and staying persistent. You managed to flip the flow and I am proud of the students that you have become. And of course, I want to thank God for the opportunity to serve with a servant leader's heart. I am humbled and honored to be here sitting before you as your next, as your new Tulare County Supervisor. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless. Thank you. And to uh, Board of Supervisor Matters, that I'll just jump right in. I also had the honor to attend the Sheriff Swearin, as well as Tim Heyer Swearin as Tulare County Superintendent, in addition to the Swearins of Cass Cook and Ronald Hill. Tomorrow morning, I will be attending Good Morning Dinuba, a monthly gathering of businesses sponsored through the Dinuba Chamber of Commerce. In addition to that, tomorrow evening, I will be attending the Northern Tulare County Regional Water Alliance meeting at 6.30 in the cutler Rosie Board Chambers, uh, School Board Chambers. Uh, in addition to that, on Friday, I will be attending the County Oversight Board meeting in this building. Uh, and the following week, the Dinuba Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee will hold its monthly meeting, and I will be attending that as well. One of the other events that I'm looking forward to, um, and is something that was brought up by John Hess, our Director of General Services, who took me out there, uh, I will be attending the mass burial at the Tulare County Potter's Field. For those in the audience who do not know uh, what this is, this program serves to remember those who have died in Tulare County that were homeless, could not afford burial, burial were left abandoned or unclaimed or unable to locate relatives. I was able to tour the facility when uh, John Hess gave me the tours around the county. And it is scheduled for 10 a.m. next Wednesday. And that is all I have. Thank you. For those of you uh, that want to stick around and chit chat with the new supervisors, we will be having a reception after the board meeting. Uh, it's not a very long meeting, so if you want to bear with us for a, for a few minutes, uh, we will uh, take a recess after that and, and have a nice reception uh, here. Uh, with that, I will take up item five, public comments. Anyone in the public that wishing to speak on matters that are within our jurisdiction but not agendized, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. T-Bone Thoborn. <laughs> well, uh, Happy New Year, Mr. Chairman and uh, Supervisors. Far be it for me to pass up an open mic. Um, <laughs> You're limited at three minutes. <laughs> and it started. Well, as, uh, as Assembly Leader Emeritus and Supervisor Emeritus Conway has wisely opined on several occasions, be brief, be brilliant, be gone, I can only promise to maybe get one or two of those right. Uh, but I will be brief. I just want to say on behalf of Southern California Edison, Happy New Year. We look forward to continuing our partnership. Uh, with the county and with all of your uh, excellent staff. I do want to uh, just give you all a heads up. As part of the ongoing wildfire mitigation that uh, we at Edison, all of the utilities throughout the state are engaged with, um, we're going to be very aggressive throughout the, our valley region on uh, safeguarding, upgrading our system, and that's going to involve a lot of pole replacements, uh, going from wood poles to uh, fire-resistant uh, metal poles. So just a heads up, that roughly equates to 26,000 poles just in our region. So you're going to be seeing our uh, crews out there 
uh, quite a lot. Uh, continue to give you all a heads up uh, when we're in your areas. But if you have any questions or if your constituents have any questions, obviously don't hesitate to, uh, to call me. So thank you very much. Thank you. My, my poll by my house has a big chunk missing out of it. So you? Uh, you think that they might replace it? I'm kidding. But I see him. <laughs> he hit it. Thank you, uh, Supervisor. <laughs> I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole if I were thank you. you uh, <laughs> thank, thank you, uh, Supervisor Vanderpool. But as I recall, you live on the border between us and our sister utility. And I believe you're, I believe, speaking as a former uh, PG&E colleague like uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I believe you're in PG&E's territory. Okay, but I, if, if, <laughs> if, not, if, not, if not, I'll get back to you. Great. <laughs> I appreciate that, Brian. I, I think it's important to note that there may be inconveniences, but it's well worthwhile to make sure that our communities are safe. Any other public comments? Good morning, Chair, members of the board. My name is Weston Anderson. I've had the pleasure of getting to know some of you over the past few years, but congratulations to both of the new members. I wanted to come today and formally reintroduce myself. I'm the new district uh, representative for uh, State Senator Shannon Grove, and so I will have the pleasure of working with you guys all in the future again. Um, I'll be able to speak with all of you at the reception afterwards and be able to provide you with my contact information and personal cell phone. So congratulations and thank you again. Thank you, Wes. Any other public comments? Everybody's in-house today. I'm glad you guys chose our meeting other than over everyone else. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Matt Rogers. I know many of you. I'm representing Senator Kamala Harris. The senator asked me to be here this morning to congratulate the new supervisors, uh, Valero and Townsend, uh, and uh, to wish you all a uh, happy new year and look forward to working with you in this new year uh, as we move forward in hopeful peace and progress. So thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be brief. Uh, Maria Lemos, I live in Fresno, but I am the district director of Senator Melissa Hurtado, so she sends congratulations, and I look forward to working with you. So Happy New Year, and um, I'm a board member of Proteus, so I'm in Tulare quite often, so um, congratulations again, and I uh, look forward to working with sheriff and um, school districts and whatever we could do at the state. Um, you know, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. It's, re it's real easy. You help with bringing the money. <laughs> That's it. I knew we were missing an, a legislator. <laughs> Not. My name is Rachel Ray, and I'm a representative for Assemblyman Mathis. I live in Exeter, California, and we brought certificates to recognize Mr. Valero and Mr. Townsend's new seats, and we're sending our congratulations from Assemblyman Mathis. We look Good. forward to working with you. Thank you. To hand those to the uh, clerk. <laughs> Any other public comments? Seeing none, we will move on to our consent calendar. Items 6 through 30, we have a request to pull number 25 for separate consideration. We also have a correction for item 22. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, item number 22, we just need to make a correction. The governing board resolution that was submitted lists the chairman uh, to sign. Uh, we're asking that it needs to be corrected to read that the deputy clerk of the board sign the resolution. Uh, staff will update the file, and there's no other changes that are required. Any other items wishing to be pulled? I'll say item 22 as well, the same one. Uh, item 22 was just corrected. Do okay. you would like to pull it? Just, no, not pull uh, for a brief comment. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's any items uh, like to be pulled from the public... Seeing none, I will uh, entertain a motion. Uh, Move approval for, for the remainder of the consent calendar. Second. Anyone? I'll second that. It's been moved by Supervisor Shecklin, seconded by Supervisor Townsend. Uh, Supervisor Valero. Yes. So I just wanted to make just a brief comment with regards to emergency preparedness. Um, first, I want to thank our first responders, operational units, and personnel for working to develop systems that will protect our communities for such situations. I uh, just wanted to share that Dennis and I attended the new Supervisors Institute in San Diego last month, and one of our workshop sessions 
did focus and was devoted on emergency preparedness, given that uh, in recent situations are happening across our state. So we had representatives from Solano and Butte counties as a result of the fires up north, and then also uh, San Bernardino representative due to the recent shooting as well. So it was very informative panel with reflection, conversation, as well as tools to move forward. And so thank you staff for being at the forefront and looking forward to the work that you will do to, to continue to keep our area safe. Very good. Any other comments regarding consent? Yes, item 25. Uh, well, we pulled oh, that, so okay. we'll, we'll take that uh, right after this. Okay. Uh, we will now vote, cast your votes. Motion passes unanimously, 5-0. Now we'll take up item 25. Mr. Schenke. Yes, and so the question that I had for Mr. Uh, Schenke was, uh, I've attended several <laughs> Ivanhoe Town Council meetings in the past, and one of the intersections that is constantly discussed is Avenue 326, or 328 and Road 159, um, and this has been in, in various conversations. So can we look at this, or is this something that the county has already been working on? That's correct. Uh, Reed Shanky with the Resource Management Agency. Um, the item here is, uh, was identified during some of those community meetings here, this stop sign at Waverly, um, but you're right, the intersection of Avenue 328 and Road 159 um, it's a, a potential, there was a request to put in a four-way stop. We've actually done some man analysis on that, and it's maybe not applicable for a four-way stop at that location, but we're progressing with the design and construction of a lighted crosswalk there, uh, flashing beacons, pedestrian activated, and some bulb outs. So the intent or the, the goal is to have that constructed spring or summer of this year. So hopefully that meets the, the safety concerns that the community has for that intersection. Thank you. Thank you so much. If there are no other comments, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Moved by Supervisor Shecklin. I'll second the motion. Second by Supervisor Vanderpool. Any public comments? All those in favor, please cast your votes or oppose. <laughs> Abstentions. Motion carries unanimously. And we'll now go to our uh, untimed item, item 31, a request from County Council to approve training on February 27th, 2019 for special districts and independent agencies on the topic of basic functions and duties of local agencies. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the board, CAO and County Council. My name is Jennifer Flores. I'm a Chief Deputy with the County Council's office. And this item is to request your board approve the provision of training for special districts and independent public agencies on the topics of basic functions and duties of local uh, public agencies. Uh, this training is scheduled for February 27th, 2019. And just for some background, County Council began providing this training to the special districts in 2009 upon request of your Board of Supervisors to assist these local agencies in gaining valuable education in laws governing special districts. Uh, we've trained on a number of subjects, uh, areas affecting special districts, including but not limited to the Brown Act, harassment and discrimination prevention, public contracting, and AB 1234 ethics for pu public officials. We have invited 88 special districts to attend. This excludes any health and school districts, um, and it's provided to them at no cost. On average, we have approximately 70 uh, special district members attend this training. This year, County Council is partnering with the Tulare County Auditor's Office and the Registrar of Voters to provide training on the Brown Act, uh, Ethics for Public Officials, Public Agency Employment Law, District Payments and Controls and Election Requirements. In addition, we will be administering the Oath of Office for any new special district members who have not yet be, uh, uh, taken the oath after being elected or appointed to office. We expect to incur approximately 2,900 in costs associated with the printing and binding of the training materials and providing dinner to our attendees. Uh, with your board's approval, the training is scheduled to take place on February 27th, 2019 from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. here at the Board of Supervisors building. Do you have any questions for me? Very good, Supervisor Vanderpool. Mr. Chair, uh, just to make a, a few comments. Um, first of all, I wanna thank uh, the grand jury for really bringing up the need for uh, training for special districts board members and uh, all the various issues that we've been having throughout the county. Um, this is number nine, number 10 that we've done. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, program that really does meet a need out there. You know, all, every 
uh, unincorporated community typically has a special district of some sort, whether it's a memorial district or a, a school board or a community services district or a public utilities district. All of these uh, members of communities are, are elected members that uh, we all represent, uh, and they don't happen to receive uh, the typical training that an elected official would receive. Uh, due to lack of funds or lack of awareness. And uh, this is really an opportunity for the county to step up. And I think this is money very, very well spent. Uh, I think it makes a difference in our communities. And I, I don't think we have to advocate or try to sway votes here. I think everybody's supportive. Uh, but uh, I really appreciate county council taking this uh, bull by the horns and moving it forward. And uh, I want to thank the auditor uh, controller's office for really uh, stepping up and filling the need. And um, elections office, everybody that uh, contributes to this. There's always a new twist to each of these training sessions that uh, covers some new material uh, that these board members may not uh, necessarily know about. And I think that it's always uh, productive. There's a lot of questions asked, uh, and I appreciate uh, what you do, and I'm, I'm very, very happy to uh, move for approval of this item if there's nothing further. By Supervisor Second. Vanderpool. Second by Supervisor Shucklin. Uh, I would like to make a couple of comments. One, I think uh, I'm going to volunteer Supervisor Shucklin, uh, since she serves on the board of the Institute for Local Government, that I think there's some opportunities to partner uh, with some of the resources that the ILG may have. Actually, Special Districts is one of the right. affiliates along with the League of California Cities and CSAC. Right. So I, I, I think there's some, some great nexus as far as uh, abilities because we are – we are the stewards of special districts if they happen to fail. So we have a responsibility as a county to make sure that these special districts uh, do well and uh, that, that they're providing uh, vital services to our community. So I, I, I applaud the effort and continue to do the work. If there's no other comments, uh, please cast your votes. Public comment? No public comment. Good. Vote passes unanimously. And now we will take a recess. We will take up closed session after the recess. <clears throat> we go back to. He was doing good. And then, uh... We'll now reconvene the uh, Tulare County Board of Supervisors meeting for January 8th. And uh, do we have any need for closed session? Mr. Chairman, we do. Item C is off calendar. Items A and B will be heard in closed session. I do not expect any announcements out. Is there any public comments for anything on closed session? Seeing none, we will go into closed session.